Alrighty, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Grace Helmick. And I'm Diana Tysinger. And today we're going to be talking about experiential learning. So, Diana, I am a very disgruntled student. That's always been my impression of you, yes. Yes. I'm very upset because I would love to get some real-world working experience, but every internship or externship that I look to is not unpaid. And I'm sorry, but I really can't afford to take off a summer from a part-time retail job that I'm working in order to get this experience. But I know that when I graduate and I start applying to jobs, they're going to want experience. So what do I do? You know, it, it, it seems like there's no avenue for me to get this kind of help so I can get this experience that I really want without having to sacrifice financially or take some risk that I really don't feel prepared to take. So many great points to unpack there. Um, All right, so the first thing that we want to do is kind of clarify this definition of experiential Mm -hmm. learning. Um, And one way that you might think about experiential learning is that it is applied learning. So Mm. it does not have to involve um, an extensive field study or an internship or um, really even leaving the classroom. But typically, experiential learning provides students with an opportunity to apply several different skills in and around a given content area and to create some kind of product. The idea with experiential learning is that you're going beyond uh, just rote memorization or a specific um, content area and field of study and that you're bringing together a, a wide array of skills. And that's why employers like to see evidence of for example, internships, but they like to see evidence of some kind of um, applied learning because they know that that requires you to bring together lots of different skills, maybe soft skills, um, writing, written expression, verbal expression, um, media production, lots of different uh, real world things that employers want their, um, trying to think of a word other than employees, that employers want to see in the workplace, um, but that maybe extend uh, outside of traditional classroom learning. Got you. So being able to recite x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a is actually not what, you know, experiential learning is about? Yeah, you lost me at x, to be honest. Oh, okay. But, um, right. Um, employers want to see that you can take that learning from the textbook or from the lecture and then do something useful with it. So um, we really encourage, we had a workshop, um, was it last week, two weeks ago? Time is a fuzzy construct. Um, We had a workshop where we looked specifically at introducing experiential learning or applied learning opportunities Um, in small ways in the classroom. And part of this is an equity issue, right? Because Mm -hmm. not every student can afford to take the summer off of their job. I do want to point out that we have some resources here at William & Mary, and I don't know if other institutions have similar resources. Um, We have the um, FUSE funding. It's funding for unpaid summer experiences. You can contact Lisa Randolph. She's the Assistant Director of Experiential Learning. She um, has she has more information about FUSE funding. So the other avenue students need to look into is the opportunities that they have uh, in their classes to maybe produce something um, outside of a traditional paper. Now, you're not going to have this opportunity in every class. Some classes are very structured, and the um, assessments are pretty set. It's a final exam or it's a final term paper. Um, But where there is latitude and where professors are flexible, I encourage students to work with their professors to find ways to bring to bear some of those other skill sets that they want to develop. Um, Sometimes it can be the push that you need as a student to learn about something like podcasting if you pitch to your professor, hey, instead of the final paper, is it possible for me to do, uh, you know, a video presentation or record a podcast episode and submit that as the artifact of my learning? And then you can turn around on your resume and update that to reflect that, hey, here's a whole other skill set that I developed through this experiential learning opportunity, this applied learning, um, where I created a product that you can look at, but I also learned how soundboards work, and I learned about uh, framing videos, and 
maybe learn to work as part of a collaborative team because somebody else was doing the lighting part of it and somebody was on sound. Um, I guess one last thing that I'll say about this is, you know, your, your undergraduate years are really a time to explore and experiment mm-hmm. in sort of a safe, low risk way. So if there are potential career paths that are interesting to you and that you want to explore, advocate for yourself. You know, see if there are ways in your classes in small ways or beyond your classes in your extracurriculars to explore what it would be like if you were doing some of the tasks that are associated with that career. Um, And if you don't know what is it like to actually be a photojournalist, then reach out to our alumni network. We have such Mm -hmm. a huge alumni network that you can access through LinkedIn. And if you connect with somebody who is a William & Mary alum that's already in that field, they are gonna be so, in most cases, like supportive, encouraging, inviting you to shadow them or interview them. Even if it's a Zoom interview from your dorm room, these are ways that you can uh, get a little bit of a glimpse of what that would be like. And like we talked about in our workshop the other week, Um, you know, even failure is learning. Mm -hmm. So even if you go down the path of exploring, oh, maybe photojournalism is the thing that I want to do with my life, and then you find out, actually, I hate that, you still learned something and gained a skill set. So um, definitely use this time, this rare, precious time Mm -hmm. of an undergraduate to explore those opportunities. Yeah, I, I could not agree more. And that's something that myself and the other students were saying is that, you know, William and Mary specifically, we're very afraid of failure. And we learn more from failure than we do from success most times. And so I guess, you know, also looking at this from a faculty perspective, you know, if you had any advice, whether it's like the value of or encouragement, let's say a faculty member is like a little nervous. Like I, I, I always have a final paper. I do a lecture style class. Like, I, you know, is, is trying something new, is trying this experiential like applied learning is that actually beneficial you know what what would you say to that faculty member yeah definitely go for it um assume that the first time you introduce an experiential learning opportunity start smaller and less ambitious than you think you should because it's always going to take more time and planning and more bumps are going to come up than you expected Um, and then you're going to refine just assume that when you introduce it it's going to go this way this time it's going to change the next time I do it. It's an iterative process. Um, And then remember that what we hear consistently from faculty who are using any kind of applied or experiential learning opportunities is that those are the experiences their students write about on course evals. Mm. That's where they say, I will never forget this thing about this class. Like that's the learning that sticks with students and that they retain. So even if it doesn't go according to script, they're going to take something away from it and remember that opportunity in your class. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Diana. Thank you, Grace. So nice talking to you. Oh, so good talking to you too. So now about the glitter bomb. 